What's up, everybody? It was a few days late, but I wanted to talk about Microsoft canceling Scalebound from developer Platinum Games. And I want to talk about what it means for Platinum Games as a developer, Microsoft and that, or Xbox as a brand, and then Microsoft as a whole, as well as just kind of the future of both. So the game Scalebound, an action RPG, it's got this guy named Drew who's very uh, Devil May Cry, Dante-like with dragons, co-op. And I believe it was first shown, I don't know if it was shown in 2014, might have been 15, E3, uh, E3 2015. And uh, every, I don't want to say every time they show gameplay of it, uh, but several times people kind of mocked it for the low frame, the low frame rate. Some people were even calling it uh, like slideshow just because that's how bad it would slow down. And uh, I never really, I can't remember, it's been so, so long since I've actually watched gameplay of it. I can't recall how how it looked, if it did look as rough as people kind of say it does. But just the concept of it seemed kind of cool. I didn't really care for the style of the character, kind of that everybody's kind of uh, rock star-ish and uh, snarky. Just too much, he was just really just too much like Dante. And then plus his name was just very basic Drew. It was just doesn't really like spark anything, but it's a new IP, Microsoft exclusive. So uh, that's something, plus it was developed by, or was in development by Platinum Games. And we all know them for big action games earlier, like Bayonetta and then Transformers Devastation. Not so much Ninja Turtles, Mutants in Manhattan, because that game was terrible, like trash. And I usually, uh, Bayonetta 1, they didn't play Bayonetta 2, because it was a Wii U exclusive. Bayonetta 1 and Transformers Devastation, I actually thought were pretty dope, especially Bayonetta was ridiculously good. But those are only two games from Platinum that I can recall, or that I know for sure, that I've played extensively in light. And they do have Near Automata, which is coming to PS4 and PC uh, next month, or the mo no, actually March, actually. So, and the demo is up on PlayStation Store, so if you haven't played that, definitely go check that out. I'm kind of digging it. I will have a Video. I still need to post a video on my some gameplay of the demo and my thoughts. But anyways, so let's just start with uh, Platinum Games. Now, I remember at one point everybody just kind of uh, held Platinum Games up like pretty high as a superstar developer, and everybody loves their action games. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which I didn't. I played the demo. I didn't like it. But then they started making some more licensed games or some licensed games. And I know the Legend of Korra game was not well received. And then I already said I like Transformers Devastation. And I'm not even a big Transformers fan, but I like the game. It looked great, it played good. And then Ninja Turtles, and I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan. So I was ready for this game. It was supposed to have co-op. And but when it finally hit, I remember going, I picked it up on launch, but it was not a good game, not at all. It was honestly, Mutant Simon had played like a game that came from a developer years ago who's no longer in existence. That's how like bad it was. Just some of the ideas were just terrible. You could tell it was just to scoop up some cash. I don't know how well it sold and if it's just I don't know. So if it was a cash grab it probably didn't do well in that regard either. But so I don't know right now platinum I don't know some people were saying at least maybe last year, the year before, like platinum may be stretching themselves too thin. But I don't know, uh, it's kind of hard to know. No, you never really know in game development, I don't know how big the company is, how many people are on their teams, or just how many people they staff, whatever. But as I said, they got Nier Automata coming around and I'm always on Twitter, so checking hashtags. And then that one seemed to be, like the demo at least seemed to be pretty well received and I liked it. So it might just be licensed games they don't do as well on or what's going on, who knows. But, so that's Platinum. Now, as far as exclusives for Microsoft and Xbox, uh, Scalebound was definitely one of the headliners for this year. So, so for, to lose that one, that's pretty big. Because some other games that they've shown, I don't know if Phil Spencer kind of uh, mentioned this afterwards that we're looking at Crackdown 3, <clears throat> State of Decay 2, Sea of Thieves, and Halo Wars 2. Now, Halo Wars is connected to Halo that, I mean, that's something, but then, again, it's an RTS, and RTS are, the genre is pretty niche, honestly. You know, it's big on PC, 
and I don't know how well they do on consoles, but uh, you got the Halo name attached to it, so you're gonna have the RTS crowd if they're into it. I know people, I played hard, I played a little bit of the first one, but RTS isn't for me, so. But I know, I mean, if you're into eight RTS games, and like if you really like Halo lore, then you're probably gonna, probably gonna buy it. You don't need much convincing for that. But the genre itself is pretty niche. And then uh, the other games aren't, even though people might say they're into them and they're looking forward to them, those aren't, those aren't gonna be big, seller, big sellers. Now, Crackdown 3, that one, I mean, I could go either way, but we still haven't seen a whole lot from that. And the way they're pushing it with uh, kind of servers and all the destruction, I mean, who knows how much is really going into that. And if we'll see more, that one's coming out this year. We definitely have to see. If it's coming out anytime after E3, uh, we they're gonna have to show it big. And we still got packs too. But if it's coming out in the fall, it's, I just can't imagine it doing too well. Cause we got Red Dead Redemption 2. And that's gonna say, anybody supposed to game out around Red Dead Redemption 2 is a fool. Cause there is no, you need to put your game out weeks before it drops. If you put it out afterwards, it's, I can't imagine your, your game doing too well, but so, there's, so so those are the games, other games at least that are known. If there's anything that's uh, secret that's coming out this year that Microsoft has, like they've been doing a top-notch job of keeping that thing under wraps because that's got to be better than what uh, Bethesda did with Fallout 4 because like there's nothing. So I can imagine they have too much stored up. If they do, then props for them for doing that. That's some. Uh, that's some spy level uh, mastery right there. But, uh, so yeah, exclusives. And I know a lot of people are saying, and I'm going to, that's kind of like this alarmist thing. Oh, uh, oh, no need for your Xbox now. You're rid of Xbox. Oh, it's irrelevant. I know uh, Gamer 23, 23 is like, oh, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation family is like, what? Xbox One, irrelevant. But, uh, I mean, there's no reason to get rid of your Xbox One if you enjoy it. It doesn't, like, plus, two things people are missing here. Uh, well, I'll get into one point later, but you still have, we're fresh off of Gears of War 4, which I thought was amazing, which is dope, like, in all three aspects, campaign, horror, and multiplayer. And y'all know I love some Gears multiplayer. And uh, I'm definitely going back through the campaign, too. And then Forza, Forza Horizon 3, and taking that one, just the number of cars to get a whole new setting uh, in Australia. So, and just everything that they do with those games, uh, I think it's Playground, is the name of the studio, Playground Games or something like that. But uh, just everything that they do with that game. And I'm still playing Forza 6, so, but I would definitely love to try out Forza 3. There is a demo, Forza Horizon 3. I mean. And then the other point was, uh, he was talking about getting rid of uh, your Xbox One, there's no there's no point in having an Xbox One. That's wrong. The, uh, the big thing they're missing here, and this is, I far, as far as I know, I'm the only person that's ever actually said this before until I saw uh, Review, Tech's, Review Tech USA's video, and he mentioned it too. People, like, there's a very important reason people have consoles that nobody seems to mention. It's not because they don't want a PC. There's a uh, level of simplicity that comes with the console. Like it's just plug and play. Yeah, you have to install and updates and everything, but it's really just, it's pretty like simple. Like boom, you got it, you play it. All right. And now think about everybody that plays games, not just like video games aren't just for like the 25 to 35, 40 year old people who've been playing games since Atari and Nintendo. You have kids and we've seen how the older, the older demographic has been into gaming as well. From like, we saw that with just the Wii itself. And now it's like, that was just that system. So imagine everything else, like there's gamers of all ages and that's simplistic. It's very simple and easy. Like nobody wants to deal with, like just think about graphics cards. Like yeah, like we're all, all of us who are our, our gamers, like yeah, we can have discussions about those, but like just regular people just walking around, they're not gonna understand graphics cards. And they're like GTX, what? Like, what does this even mean? Like nobody wants to deal with this when they're uh, like upgrading their system, upgrading their parts for their rigs, all that stuff. People don't even know what a rig means. You're like, oh, what kind of gaming rig? Like people over the head. So that's like, that's a very important thing that people don't seem to understand when they're talking about. And honestly, let's talk about this console war. The only people that care about console war are people like hardcore gamers. Regular people, 
uh, who make up the rest of the gaming demographic don't care at all, don't understand it, don't even think about it, and just don't care. So, uh, as far as, like, yeah, it's great to talk about consoles and numbers and how many systems sold and games sold, but that's honestly, like, the hardcore demographic that really cares about that type of thing. The next point I really wanted to get into kind of the future of Xbox as a brand and then Microsoft as a whole, because some people really forget that Microsoft isn't just the Xbox company. Like, they do way more than just Xbox. That's just a portion of what their company represents. Whereas Sony, you look at Sony, most of what they're known for nowadays, that hasn't always been true, but like if you think about Sony now, it's mostly about, what if you're not talking about uh, the film studio, it's pretty much gaming, like TVs, uh, film studio, but that's it, it's pretty much, most of their stuff right now is about gaming. And I mentioned, uh, the Gamer 2323, great dude, Jeremy, go, ch go check out his channel. In his video, he made a video talking about uh, Microsoft Canceling kind of Scale Down as well, and kind of asked, kind of put a, posed a question to Xbox Gamers of uh, what do you think about, or what do, what do they think about the future of Microsoft, future of Xbox? And now I am, uh, since Xbox 360, I'm a primarily Xbox dude, 360, uh, and Xbox One on my main consoles. I do have a PS4, and I had I do have the Wii as well as older systems. And but yeah, 360 and Xbox One are my main systems. So just as an Xbox One gamer, yeah, it does kind of worry me because 2017 you don't have a lot of big sellers. Now last couple of years, yeah, Gears 4, Forza Horizon 3, Halo 5, regardless of whatever everybody thinks about Halo as a franchise and how long it's gone on and all the entries. I mean, there's still like a huge dedicated uh, Halo Halo fan base and to an extent, to a lesser extent, Gears is because third person shooters, I don't wanna say they're niche, but they're like the fan base for those a little bit smaller than it is for first person shooters. Why, I don't know, I prefer third person shooters myself, but like looking at 2017, doesn't look that great. And I mean, I'm not, it's kind of different because I'm as a multi-console guy, like I have access to everything except for PC exclusive games, but they never come across my radar really, like anything on Steam, nothing. And I skipped the Wii U, so that's not an issue for me. There's a couple of games I wanted, but we don't need to get into that. Okay, so let's look, talk about going forward. Microsoft does need, they do need to, Start working on or getting some more first party studios in there, more action adventure games. Because since I don't, know, I don't know about first Xbox, but I know it's from 360 and Xbox One, uh, they haven't done as well in uh, Japan. But I mean, consider you have Nintendo and PlayStation being made right there. So, in all those games, you got RPGs, action adventures, and those games are those games so big over there. Whereas Xbox is primarily, I don't want to say it's primarily known, but it it is really known for being uh, for housing shooters. So and shooters don't do as well over there. Maybe the, as a like the multi-platform ones, but if the systems aren't being sold over there, the exclusives aren't going to sell as well either. So or as unwell, I guess. None of this means get rid of your Xbox. Your Xbox is useless. It's not paperweight anymore. Sell it. Whatever. I mean, if that's what you want to do. I mean, go for it. Why would you? I don't know. But, I mean, there's still plenty of games. They're gonna have games coming out. And there's still games that you can play now. Like, it doesn't mean, doesn't erase what happened last year. Like, the games that came out last year. Like, those still exist. Just because they're not, like, the hot games, like, right this week is as if they just released. Doesn't mean they stopped existing. And then, there's the Xbox Scorpio coming out. Now, Scorpio kind of worries me because you need something, okay, you're gonna tell that this is gonna be the most powerful system ever, what do you do? You need like games to show that off and you don't wanna have, like, show off the same games that have already been out that people have already played multiple times. So you need new stuff. So something's there, like something has to be cooking there, not even trying to sound like fanboys, like, oh, I'm just damage control or just kind of being optimistic, optimistic for the sake of optimism. Uh, like there's just gotta be something there or if they just come up with the system and like no new games, like it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's gonna be a lot of multiplayer, multi-platform games that will drop in obviously around the same time. It's gonna be a new Call of Duty. I already said Red Dead Redemption 2. Sports games, gonna drop around the same time. Well, Madden will be a little sooner probably. 
I well, it always is because it's gonna be a summer game. But that's just a few things uh, that there. So yeah, there is some worry about this year and the immediate. As far as the future, I mean, who knows? But uh, the big thing with Microsoft, at least Phil Spencer has tried to say in recent years, it's not just Xbox. So that's why people always talk about Xbox games. Oh, it's nothing. What's the point of having an Xbox if it's going to be a PC? And I already mentioned that PC or the system is cheaper and dealing with like upgrades, graphics cards, all that type of stuff. Nobody wants to, not everybody wants to deal with that. Yes, if you have a PlayStation 4 and a PC and you have the money, and especially if it's just like just one person, you don't have to deal with that with multiple people because not everybody's going to understand that. And then it's always about, as I said, uh, at least with Phil Spencer has always tried to say this. It's about getting the games into many, as many players' hands as possible. So you do the Gears of War 4, Windows 10, and Xbox One. So if you have it, especially if you, if you have both, that's great. If you have one, like I just had Xbox One, I got Gears 4. People on PC, and they get still have Gears 4. It's getting the game, their game, so it's not just, oh, the Xbox, as I said. They just gotta, there's a bit of perspective here, especially from PlayStation fanboys, because y'all know anytime Xbox does anything, oh, they're terrible, they're trash. Like, it's all about perspective, so just kind of want to throw that thing out, throw, that, throw those thoughts out there. So just to kind of offer up another viewpoint that I haven't really heard a lot, because everybody seems to be alarmist and, oh, it's extreme, Xbox is in trouble, that type of thing. And we need to get away from that because there's definitely a lot more there that people don't seem to understand. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on Scalebound, Xbox, Platinum Games, and Microsoft as a company and their exclusives for this year and kind of uh, their brand going forward. So let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of these thoughts. And if you have any thoughts about uh, Scalebound cancellation as well as Xbox exclusives and anything else related, go ahead, drop them in the comments below. Let me know. Genome Dragon saying thanks for watching and Happy gaming.